Welcome to USDTL's Hair Collection Instructions video. Materials provided by USDTL, plastic specimen bag, envelope with security seal, custody and control form. Materials that must be provided by the collector or collecting facility. Cutting scissors, non-ethanol based alcohol pads, hair clips, comb, disposable glove, disposable razor. Before collection, check that the donor's hair is not chemically treated or synthetic. If so, an alternate specimen should be used. Do not collect cosmetically treated or synthetic hair. Do not mix head hair and body hair specimens. Observance of the specimen at all times by the donor and collector prior to sealing the specimen container is required. To ensure there is enough specimen to complete the assay, it is recommended that 100 milligrams of specimen is submitted for all tests below 10 panel. This is equal to a bundle of hair that is one and a half inches in length and about one quarter inch in diameter, the diameter of a number two pencil. For ETG, add-ons, and or tests above 10 panel, 150 milligrams of specimen is recommended. Specimens under the required volume may result in a QNS, quality not sufficient. Please refer to our QNS policy online. A gem scale is highly recommended. USDTL will only test the one and a half inches of hair closest to the scalp, referred to as the root end. Prior to each collection, Wipe the scissors, hair clips, and comb with a non-ethanol based alcohol pad. Examine the donor's hair prior to beginning the collection. Check that the donor's hair is not chemically treated or synthetic. Verify the donor's identity with a government issued photo ID. On the custody and control form, do the following. Once verified, Mark the picture ID verified box on the custody and control form. Record the donor's ID number. This may be the social security number, driver's license number, medical record number, employee number, or any other number of your facility's choosing. Record the donor's name. Mark the specimen matrix and location. Mark the appropriate reason for testing. Mark the panel ordered for this collection. Record the collection site facility information if it is different than the account information at the top of the form. Open the collection supplies in the presence of the donor. Fold each side of the collection foil up to form a tray and open the envelope so the printed ruler is visible. Clipping the hair. The ideal site for collection is at the top of the back of the head, called the crown or vertex area. Collectors should use gloves throughout the collection. For hair longer than one and a half inches, isolate a section of hair above the area to be sampled and secure it with a hair clip. Using a rat tail comb, select a section of hair to be clipped with cutting shears at scalp level. If the client has thin hair, multiple sites may be used. Clip the hair and place it on the envelope near the printed ruler with the root end to the left. Using the ruler, cut the hair to one and a half inches in length, keeping the one and a half inches closest to the root end. Discard the rest of the hair. Place the hair in the foil tray. Continue collection until you have the required amount of specimen. If you are not using a gem scale to weigh the specimen, you do not need to trim the hair to one and a half inches. Instead, fold the foil in half and place the root end of the untrimmed hair toward the end of the foil marked root end. Again, please note that USDTL will only test the one and a half inches of hair closest to the root end. Continue collection until you have the required amount of specimen. For hair shorter than one and a half inches, collect smaller amounts of hair from multiple sites around the head. 
Place the hair in the foil tray. Continue collection until you have the required amount of specimen. Once the required amount of specimen has been collected, fold the foil inward several times to secure the hair inside the foil and place it inside the collection envelope. Body hair is an acceptable alternative when scalp hair is not available. The same instructions apply to collecting body hair. Clip as close to the root as safely possible and place in the foil tray. Once the required amount of specimen is collected, fold the foil inward to secure the hair inside the foil. Do not mix body hair and head hair. Write the donor ID number from the custody and control form on the envelope in the donor ID number section. Place the long barcoded specimen seal from the custody and control form across the bottom of the envelope. Make sure the sticker seals the flap of the envelope securely. Have the donor read and initial the first sentence on the envelope and date and initial the barcoded specimen seal where donor initials is indicated. The collector should then read, date, and sign the second sentence of the envelope and record the specimen weight, if available. The donor and collector should both confirm that the donor ID number on the envelope matches the donor ID number on the custody and control form and that the control number from the barcoded sticker on the envelope matches the control number on the custody and control form. Date, sign, and print the collector name in step four of the custody and control form. Have the donor date, print, and sign their name in step five of the custody and control form. In the presence of the donor, Place the top copy of the custody and control form inside the outer pocket of the security bag. Place the specimen envelope inside the inner pocket of the security bag and seal the bag. The additional copies of the custody and control form can be distributed at the discretion of the collecting facility. Place the specimen envelope in an appropriate courier transport overwrap and contact your courier for pickup. Thank you for watching our collection video. If you have additional questions, please feel free to contact our Client Services Department at 800-235-2367 or email them at clientservices at usdtl.com.